Now we are starting with polysaccharides. We have discussed mono and disaccharides. So polysaccharides are those molecules where the number of monosaccharide units are in thousands. And these polysaccharides are classified according to two criteria. Number one, what is the mono unit they are made up of? So one criteria is, this is on the basis of the mono unit. For example, if all the mono units are same, then we classify it as homopolysaccharide. And if the mono units are different, then they would be called heteropolysaccharides. Homopolysaccharide, for example, cellulose. Cellulose is made up of only glucose. So if the mono unit is only glucose and there are thousands of glucose molecules only, then that polysaccharide will be termed as homopolysaccharide. Here we will take the example of hemicellulose. Hemicellulose is made up of some units of glucose, some units of fructose, some units of galactose. So, uh, exactly not glucose, fructose and galactose. It is made up of galactose, mannose, xylose and albinose. So, fructose, xylose, mannose and albinose. So, there are different, different mono units which have combined to form this polysaccharide. And that is why we call it heteropolysaccharide. This is one way of classifying them. The second is, what is the use? What is the function of these polysaccharides? So this is on the basis of the function or the role. Here also we can classify it into two categories. Storage polysaccharides. That means the polysaccharides which act as stored carbohydrate and second is structural polysaccharides which are per performing a function of formation of a structure for example starch it is the stored carbohydrate so it will come as storage polysaccharide and cellulose which makes up the cell wall of plants would become the structural polysaccharide. So these are the two ways in which we classify these polysaccharides. We will take up various polysaccharides starting with starch. So first polysaccharide that we are discussing is starch. It is the stored form of polysaccharide in, form, in plants. So it is storage polysaccharide and it is a homopolysaccharide. It is again homopolysaccharide. That means it is made up of only one type of mono units. And what is that mono unit? That mono unit is glucose. So starch is made up of only glucose molecules. Now, let us come to what the starch made up of first. The starch is made up of two components. They are known as amylose and amylopectin. Both have glucose as their constituting substance. There are differences. In case of amylose, the number of glucose molecules are 200 to 2000. In case of amylopectin, the glucose molecules are 2000 to 20,000. That means here the number of glucose molecules is more. The second thing which is again very important is what type of bonds are present. Here the bonds are 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Now in the previous segments we talked about these bond formation but we will quickly go over it because that is very essential in this part. If two glucose molecules join by this 1,4 glycosidic bond then what kind of a structure is formed? 
Suppose we just make this small glucose molecule, oxygen is here and it makes a bond with another glucose molecule here because it is a homopolysaccharide of glucose, we are talking only of glucose. This is carbon number one of this glucose and this is carbon number four of the other glucose. So the glycosidic bond which is formed is one four glycosidic bond. If one more glucose molecule comes here, again it is going to be first carbon of this and fourth. So whenever we talk of one four bonds, that means the structure is linear. There is no branching which is there. So in this case, due to this one four glycosidic bonds, it is a linear structure. But Linear does not mean it has to be a straight line or a straight chain. It could be in this form also. So here the structure is like this. Though it is linear, no branching, but it is a highly coiled structure. In case of amylopectin, the bonds are 1,4 glycosidic bonds and there are 1,6 glycosidic bonds also. So now let us see how the structure is due to presence of these two types of bonds. Let me make this structure here. This is one glucose molecule. Oxygen is here. This is carbon number one, two, three, four, five and six. If one more glucose joins in by glycosidic bond, this is another glucose, oxygen, carbon number one, two, three, four, five and six. So as we said in case of amylose and we saw it here also, if it is only 1,4, it is going to be a straight molecule or a linear molecule. But if 1,6 bond is formed, then there is branching. How is 1,6 formed? It is between the first carbon of one glucose and the sixth carbon of the other glucose. So if we make this glucose in this manner let us number the carbons this is carbon number one two three four five and six and the bond which is formed is between first carbon of this glucose and sixth carbon of this glucose so the bond is one six glycosidic bond as soon as one six is formed we start seeing a branch that means whenever we write one four glycosidic bond it tells us that it is only a linear molecule and when we say it is 1, 4 and 1, 6, that means to that linear structure there is branching also. Here in case of amylose, we made it in the form of a coiled structure. Here in case of amylopectin, say for example, these are the glucose molecules which are attached by 1, 4 bonds. When 1, 6 are there, we would start seeing these kind of branching also. So amylose is a linear molecule without any branching. Amylopectin has 1, 4, 1, 6 both and that is why it is a branched structure. So this one is a branched structure. Ratio in which amylose and amylopectin are present in starch is 1 is to 3. And the color, blue-black coloration of starch with iodine is due to amylose part. So blue black coloration with iodine is due to amylose. That means this component of starch is responsible for this blue black coloration. And the reason is iodine molecules, they get entangled into this coils which are formed in the structure. How is the starch present? The starch is stored. It is a storage polysaccharide. It is stored in various storage organs or structures. Those storage structures could be tubers like in case of potatoes. It could be grain as in case of rice, maize, etc. But the form in which starch is stored is known as a grain. And we classify these grains as simple grains or compound grains. What would be a simple grain? A simple grain has simple grain has 
only one point around which the starch layers are deposited. That point is known as hilum and these layers are of starch. If there is only one hilum, then the grain is termed as simple grain. But if there is, say, this hilum, few layers of starch, one more hilum, few layers of starch, one more hilum, and then there is a common sheet, then such type of starch grains would be termed as compound starch grains. So this is a compound starch grain. Simple starch grain is found in maize. So here example is maize. Whereas compound starch grain examples rice and potato. Here we get these type of compound grains. Simple grains they can be of two types depending upon the position of the hilum. They can be concentric or eccentric. The one that we have drawn here has hilum on, on one side. But if hilum is here and the starch grains are surrounded like this, then it will be called a concentric simple starch grain. So the grains, the starch which is stored is in the form of grains. And depending upon hilum numbers and position, we can classify them as simple or compound or concentric or eccentric. And this is the main or carbohydrate which is stored. Now as we are talking of starch which is a storage polysaccharide, we also need to understand one very simple thing. Plants synthesize carbohydrates as glucose. This glucose is a reducing sugar highly reactive. So when it is transported, it is converted into sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide, non-reducing sugar, so it is not going to react with anything. So synthesized as glucose, transported as sucrose and stored as starch. And when the plant wants to use it, this starch will be ultimately broken down into glucose and then it will be used. So why not store glucose itself? Because ultimately the plant has to use glucose. One reason is glucose is highly reactive. It is a reducing sugar. So it has to be converted into a non-reactive substance. Secondly, every time a bond, glycosidic bond is formed, one water molecule is eliminated. So if 100 glucose molecules are joining together, then how many water molecules would be removed? 99 water molecules would be removed. That means those many hydrogen and oxygen atoms less. So storing a polysaccharide is an easier option because it gets compact and to store a compact molecule is always going to be an easier option. Secondly, how do we break these bonds? By formation of this bond, water was lost. It is called dehydration synthesis. To break this bond, water has to be added and that is why all digestive enzymes, they are called hydrolytic enzymes. They break the bonds by addition of water. So breaking the polysaccharide to release monosaccharide is not a very difficult task. It can be easily achieved. But storing is an important thing and that is why carbohydrates are stored as polysaccharides. After starch, we will take up the next polysaccharide that is cellulose.